Hello everyone and welcome back to another Stormworks video. Now in this video we're going to be continuing with part 4 of the new build series. Now it's been a while since the last video and there's been a lot of changes. First off you guys really wanted a engine room in the ship so we've gone ahead and we've built a full interior and an engine room for the ship. It's taken a lot of time to do and a lot of effort uh, so what we'll do is we'll check that out see what we've done since the last video and then finally in this video what we're going to be doing is we're going to get all that wide up. We're going to be building the mic presses for each one of those engines getting it all hooked up to a central area and then we'll continue building the ship. Now if you're enjoying this videos comment below and what else you'd like to see in my future videos while you're there don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button and make a little bell icon to notify in my upcoming content as soon as it gets posted so with that all said let's get straight into it and get started with this video so to start with this video you can see there's been a couple changes to the exterior we've made a couple changes to the actual bow of the ship along with that is there's a whole bunch of paint blocks going along i did do a poll over in the discord server and it seemed like the number one vote there was the north sea patrol so we've gone and named the ship the north sea patrol along with that uh, a couple numbers just here and there we also got a number just here on the back of the ship just to identify it along with that is let's come up into the interior and let's have a look at what's going on there now everything's pretty much the same going on the back uh, we actually have the first interior which is going to be the main cabin area and the main rooms you can see we have a passageway just going along down the end first area we have is some crew bunk beds um, just along here this was done about a month and a half ago I haven't really worked on it since then and we still have to do the interior rooms going along here but you can see there are rooms going left and right all the way along till the end of the passage where we have the final room. Now from then we're going on and we'll go down into the engine room. That's where a lot of the work has gone into. So we're going to open up the door to get into the engine room. We have an automatic light that goes and opens up. We can then go and come into the actual main engine room. Now as I said a lot of things are going on in here. Uh, we first have a little bit like a pumping station there we then have the control areas left and right i am hopefully going to be getting all of this wide up uh, it's going to take a little bit of time obviously to get all of this done but we should hopefully get most of that wide up and hopefully in this video too along with that is we have a little bit of a catwalk going down into the engine room now the engine room first off on the ceilings we have a whole bunch of pipes there will be a fire suppression system along with that is we have kind of like a fake air conditioning system or ventilation system in here uh, we have some just some more details going along the sides just to give it a little bit more um, appeal we also have some aircon units just on the side hopefully blowing some cold air in here once again just aesthetics reasons uh, we have the two batteries here at the back uh, two large batteries to power this unit and then going onto the engine cells we have four large diesel engines those have been all um, hooked up I uh, haven't actually wired anything but all the piping is done direct uh, cooling from the grounds uh, of the sea we have that is the air is going to be coming up from the actual deck area and then fuel will be coming from the back of the ship where we have the fuel tanks along with that uh, we also have four of these monitors um, these monitors one per an engine these are going to show the stats of each one of the engines so we're going to get that wide up we also have the small little engine here this is going to be the little generator uh, just in case we need emergency power so we have that hooked up with a little battery completely independent unit just over here with its own fuel and own everything in there uh, and that's pretty much about it for the engine room as I said what we're going to do in this video is we're going to get all of these engines hooked up we're going to build the micro presses for them uh, we'll also get hopefully the screens all hooked up and then we can also start getting all of these control panels just over here if I don't keep on falling down uh, we'll get all these control panels hooked up and then once the engine room is done uh, hopefully in the next video we can then move into the actual bridge uh, nothing has really changed up in the bridge since the last video or since we actually originally designed it uh, going up here you can see we have a entrance into the back of the bridge uh, and then we have the bridge which we're going to build all these stations with over here and then we have the two main control seats just over here that's looking out this bridge will look absolutely amazing i think uh, but we'll have to wait till the next video to start working on that so that was it uh, let's get into it and let's start working on the engine room 
So to start, we've actually away from the ship. I built a little bit of a example here um, and kind of like a test bed that we're going to be using to build up all these controls and all the logic for these engines. Now, there's a basic engine here with all the things that I want on it, including the uh, sensors to see how much fuel is actually going through and how much coolant is going into the engine. Along with that, we also have a clutch going into the gearboxes and then a clutch going into the generator. And we also have a propeller here at the back. So these are all things that I'm wanting to actually monitor per the engine. Uh, so you can see here, these are the kind of like mock-up of the panels that we're going to be using in the ship. Uh, we're going to have one panel which will have the temperature and the RPS of the engine. Along with that, we'll be able to increase and decrease the throttle of the engine from here. Uh, along with that, we'll have fuel pump and coolant pump uh, on off switches and obviously uh, indicates to see if they're on and off. Along with that, we have the coolant flow rate and also the fuel flow rate. Uh, so those will come from the sensors. We also then have gear one, gear two, and also our clutch pressure for each one of the engines. And we'll have an ability to change the clutch, clutch pressure just over here, which will be pretty cool. Along with that is we also have is going to be the generator if it's active or not active. Uh, along with that is a clutch um, for the generator, see how much clutch we have, how much generator watts we have, and then up and down to increase the what uh, sorry to increase the clutch of the actual generator and then last we also have a screen which each one of these engines will have as you just saw when we were looking at the ship earlier on so to start off with uh, let's get into the workbench now we're going to start off by creating a little microprocessor here to take all of these controls bring it into one microprocessor uh, it's then going to get read onto the screen and it's going to pass it through into a into a main microprocessor which is going to then send all these things to these different engines okay uh, so that's how we're going to start it off with uh, uh, so I'm going to quickly jump into our mic presses here. I'm going to create a brand new one. To do that, I'm going to be calling it, uh, let's go with Marine Engine. And that's going to be the main one there. So Marine Engine Main. Cool. Length and width, uh, we'll just increase the size here and we'll start adding our logic nodes. Now, the first thing we're going to need is our on and off for each engine. Uh, so that's going to be the starter. Okay. We'll need a starter for each engine. Okay, pretty basic there. The next thing is we're going to read the RPS and we're going to read the temperature. So we'll go grab those, temp and RPS. Okay, so those are coming from the engine. The next thing we also need to be reading is we need to be reading the generator watts. So Jenny watts. That's going to be coming from the generator. We're going to also need a, let's see what else we need. We're going to need the flow. Uh, so flow fuel and we'll also need a flow for coolant okay so we got those in we just need to change that to a number okay so we have our inputs I think that's all we need uh, let's just go and double check we have two flows we obviously have our RPS our temperature we have our on off uh, we also going to have our, we also need let's see our generator and then we'll need some outputs we'll need two on offs for the gearboxes we'll also need two uh let's see two uh clutch pressures we'll need a throttle okay so let's go back to that and let's start creating the nodes for those so the first one is we're going to need on off this will be gear let's do gb1 so gearbox one we'll then need gb2 okay and that's going to be outputs Okay, so that's gearbox one and gearbox two. We'll also need a clutch for the engine. And we'll also need a clutch for the Jenny. Perfect, so those are both going to be numbers and they're both gonna be outputs. Okay, and then lastly, we'll need a throttle for the engine and that's going to be an output of a number. Okay, so, so far that's what we have and then we'll need obviously four of these for the four different engines. Uh, we might need a couple other different nodes on here but we'll increase it as we go on. Uh, along with that is let's then go into the logic. So we've got our throttle output, we have our clutch generator, clutch engine, gearbox two, gearbox one, we have our flow coolant coming in, flow fuel coming in, generator coming in, temperature coming in, 
RPS coming in and we also have our starter coming in. Okay, so these are all the controls that we're going to be working with. Now, most of these we're wanting to try and limit the number of nodes down. So what we're going to be using is composite. So we're gonna need a lot of composites. So we'll go back to our nodes here and we'll go and add in our composites. So composites and we're going to do an output and we'll do a composite in and then lastly we will also need a video out and that's going to be going to our screen of our actual monitor for each one of the engines so let's go back here let's go and put our monitor down there our input of our node and our output perfect so we have that so we need to convert all of these into a composite out and then all of these into composite in okay so to do that what we're going to be using is the writes and we're also going to be using the reads okay so we'll start with the right for the numbers so we'll just add this one just over here and we'll also grab a on off uh, perfect and then those two are going to get connected up and they're going to go out to that one pretty straightforward we didn't see increase the size i'm going to go with the maximum of 32 and the same goes with the numbers i don't know how many i'm going to be using just yet uh, but i want to just make sure we have enough space for everything moving forward so first things first, and I usually recommend guys, if you are gonna be doing the same thing, write down what you're going to be using here. Uh, it will help you a lot because to try to remember what you're going to be putting and what channels you're gonna be using them on in comparison to what you'll be doing on actual other panels outside of this microprocessor. So starter is just going to go to the first node here on our composite right. We then have fluent flow. Okay, so flow will be one and two, and then we have generator watts is three temperature for and then rps is going to be five okay along with that we can actually send all of that data straight into our um, lua script that we'll be building later on probably in another video so you'll take all of that and then that's going to go into our video out and that's going to go into our little monitor now to get all these set up uh, we are obviously going to have a composite that's going to be coming in from our main control panels so we'll need is some writes we'll sorry our reads We'll need a read number and we'll also need a read on off and we'll need several of these to actually do what we want to do with this. So you can see here we'll need one of these. So I'm just going to control and paste it. And so we have three in total and then we'll need two of these. So we then have two. And this is just starting off with we'll obviously need more probably as we carry on with this build. So first things first is let's just go hook these up. And we're gonna say that our throttle is gonna be channel one. Let's see what we have here. Our clutch for our generator is gonna be channel two. Uh, let's see, clutch for the engine is gonna be three. And then we're also going to have, what is this? Our gearbox one, gearbox two. So let's just go and switch these around. Okay, so that's gonna be one. And that's one is gonna be two okay perfect and the last thing is do we have an on and off we will need an on and off so that one needs to pass through over here so let's go and add one more node and that's going to be our starter for the engine itself okay so that's a output Okay, let's go back and we'll add this one down here and that's gonna come also from here. So we'll add another one of these. And then we also wanna pass it through from, actually no, um, yeah, we could pass it through from, let's see, this is coming in. We actually don't need that to be honest. Uh, we can get rid of that one. No need to have that at the moment because we'll just need it to actually be sending it through and this will be in the reading to actually read it into this so that's perfectly fine and then we're sending it out into our main control panel okay so we got that to start off with what we can do is we can go and save it as our marine engine perfect go and add that in we can go and exit that out. Let's go and grab that. So marine engine, there we go. We have our microprocessor. I'm just gonna be placing it behind here for now. As I said, we will change the size, but at the moment we're in planning stages. Uh, so first things first is we'll need our fluid. Uh, what is this? This is going to be our sensor for, which one is it? 
that one is for our coolant so coolant flow and then our fuel flow perfect we'll need our rps over there temperature going in there and our generator what's perfect going out is gearbox two we also then have gearbox one and we have the starter for the engine okay uh, we have the clutch generator okay perfect we have the clutch engine and we have the throttle okay so we have that all hooked up we will also need video for that and then lastly we also then you can see here we have our input which will be coming from these panels we'll all hook that up to an elegant mic processor and then we have our outputs uh sorry our inputs which is then go back into those so it's going to be talking to each other as it moves on so that now that we have the first microprocessor which is taking all this information and sending it into one processor and then sending it out via a composite and the same goes as reading its composite and sending it back into the engine uh, we actually need to start building our microprocessor for this uh, control panel now what we're going to be doing is i'm going to try and do one main microprocessor uh, for all these controls uh, we might have changed it as we go but it's going to be quite straightforward uh, so this is going to be marine engine control panel so main control panel okay and from there we're going to go with a big size to start with and then we're going to start working with our nodes now i'm going to start off with by just adding on enough to get one engine hooked up and then i'll have to do another one or keep on adding more nodes for the actual second third and fourth engine uh, but pretty much what we have is we have one input and one output along with that is we're also going to have some composites and these are going to be for the panels now the composite for the panels uh, i'm going to see how we can get these hooked up uh, but i'm going to try and break it down into four different uh, panels okay so it's going to have one panel for let's say the engine rps and uh, the throttle and so on and so forth and then we'll have another one for like the, the fuel and stuff and we'll have more and more as we move on and i'll try and make it as simple as possible but we might have to obviously play around with this and see what we can get i'm just going to start adding on our composite signals just over here so we'll need Quite a few of those and we're going to need an input and output for each one of those so we'll change that to an out change that one to an out and change that one to an out okay so it's going to be panel one in panel one out panel one in panel one out okay so p1 let's go p1 and that's going to be in and this will be p2 in this is pp3 in and this one is going to be p4 in okay and then panel one out panel two out panel three out and panel four out okay so we do have all our different panels here that are going to be working in conjunction with each other we're going to then get our inputs from each engine so we will eventually have four of these and we'll have four of these that will go back into each one of the engines we now need to get into the actual logic i'm just going to start by separating all of these out okay and we then have our main input from our engine main output from the engine and we have all of our different panels okay so panel one panel two panel three panel four panel one panel two panel three and panel four from correct yep perfect got that in okay so let's start uh this is coming from our mic presses for each one engine what we're going to do is we'll start decrypting the information so to do that uh, we're going to start reading so we'll start reading numbers now i can't remember how many numbers we have so i'll just put five or six down and then same goes with the on off signals we'll need a few of those okay so let's go and put those down there okay so let's go and hook all these up quickly and then we'll have to go back and start getting the numbers that's why i recommend writing those numbers down guys so that you know exactly which ones they're going to be going into okay so we can start decrypting this information start doing what we want with it uh, whether it be changing the values limiting the values doing what we want with it it's up to us on that front okay we're then going to send it out to panel one panel two panel three and panel four and so on and so forth depending on what information we want we will also need some writes 
so let's go and grab a write and a read okay channel count 32 and channel count 32 okay probably won't need all those to be honest um, but then you can see that this is going to be panel one out and this is going to be coming now in theory what we could do is we could actually just link this straight up into here if we wanted to uh, even into here we actually didn't really need to do much more on it uh, but I don't think we'll have enough channels for all the data that we want to read and also I want to actually just do a couple things to these numbers uh, before we actually send them across over into our separate different panels so uh, the first things first is we need to start figuring out what numbers we have so I'm just going to close this off I'm going to go back into the other microprocessor that we're working with uh, actually I'm going to just save make sure I save this so this is going to be a marine engine main control panel okay and let's go and load up our marine engine let's go see what numbers we're using here okay so our flow coming in so we have good and flow is coming in as one and we also have fuel is two okay so Let's go to our logic here and let's see. So we have one and we have two. Okay, and that's gonna go into one and it's gonna go into two there. Okay, that should be pretty straightforward. That's panel one. Uh, actually, I didn't want panel one. I'm going to do panel two if I'm correct. Let's go and just play that on there. Let's save that exit out there panel two okay panel two is going to be let's see yep our fluid flow and fluid flow yep perfect and we said that coolant is going to be two if i'm correct and fuel is going to be one let's just go double check that is fuel one no, coolant is one okay let's go back and Okay, let's change the numbers around. Okay, and we have two and we have one. Okay, and that should be good now. Let's go and actually just add in our microprocessors. We should have our control panel. Let's add that down over there. We're then going to say, okay, well, that one's going to there. That one's going to there. And then we have panel to perfect and going back in okay and that's also actually that can't go back in because it needs to go into there and we can bring it there now that in theory should work let's go and check it out so it's coming in from all that data coming to there possibly going into the screen just now going back into the next Lua script and then coming out into our panels so you can see there we have our fuel and we have our coolant okay next thing that i want to do is i want to actually just do our on offs here uh, that's going to be for our fuel and our coolant now those should be pretty simple to work out we have on off now if i'm correct coolant was one so let's just go and change that to two and then coolant is going to be one so in one in okay and Let's go find coolant and that's going to be one and fuel is going to be two okay because those are just going to speak to each other we don't have to do anything there uh, they are linked up as you can see here if we go to our composite we're getting our data that's coming in i actually might just switch the angle of that and put that there and then that one going into there so it's going in there first going out going into that one okay so that should work now let's go and see yep and yep cool so we got that we also need to read that data so let's go back into our microprocessor and we're reading that data from panel two and that's going to get read as on off so let's just grab it on off grab another on off okay and then that can get sent out over here which would be great so we just need to convert this back into composites and let's see so we've got composites on off 
Let's go and take that. We'll get two channels to start off with. Perfect. Now in theory we didn't need to decrypt it, but as I said we might, we probably have to because we're going to have so much stuff coming through uh, that we will have to do this. That's unfortunate just to see how it is and channel 1 and channel 2. Perfect. As I said you could probably get rid of that stuff there. But once again it's up to you on how much information you want to send out. Uh, marine engine, medical panel, okay. And that's going over back out into our actual panels themselves <clears throat> now we can test that out by just saving that up going here going and just connecting two lights uh, let's do two lights here imagine that these are our on off for the pumps did i add on pumps no we didn't so let's go back into this one let's go and take it coming out so we can actually get rid of these because those that's one and that's two if I'm correct yes it is and let's add some nodes on let's add fuel pump and let's add on coolant pump perfect and those are going to be outs Great, uh, let's add those on. We said coolant was one and fuel was two. Okay, let's go and save that up. Let's go and make sure everything's connected. Composite, in, out, and in, out. Perfect. And then we'll need our coolant pump and our fuel pump. Just make sure we've got electric for our test here. And let's try that. So, you can see we're reading the flow rates. Those are coming from the sensors. We then have our coolant pump. Boom, coolant pump is on and fuel pump. And fuel pump is on, okay. We have crossed the wire with our on off. Let's go and double check what we have crossed in here. So coolant pump da -da -da, and starter is still on what two. We don't need it on two, we need it on three, okay. Perfect, um, so that's pretty much the basics of that. Uh, what I'm going to go do now is I'm gonna continue hooking up all these different panels. So we're finished getting everything wired up now. All the microprocessor has been created. Uh, so what we're going to do is I'm gonna spawn in and show you guys what we've done. Um, so as I said, everything has been wired up and linked up to the engine now. Uh, we have a engine starter over here. Along with that is the throttle, which is controlled by these two up and down arrows. We also have a temperature and RPS sensor. Uh, we have our coolant pumps and indicators. Along with that is our coolant flow uh, rate and also our flu flow rate. Uh, finally, we have our two clutches, one for the gearboxes and one for the actual generator. Our clutch pressure and if gearbox one or two is active. And then we have our clutch for our generator with generator watts, generator clutch, and then a generator active button. So first off, what we're going to do is we're going to increase the throttle to about 50%, get the engine started. You can see the engine's going. Our temperature's working and our RPS is working for the engine. Uh, we have our cooler pumps, which currently aren't actually linked up to those because we don't have the pumps on the station just yet. Uh, along with that, you can see the flow rate is working uh, from those sensors. We then have our gearboxes. So what happens is if we increase the clutch, you can see here our actual motor is going on there, which is perfectly fine. And then lastly, we have our generator. So if we increase the clutch, uh, we will see that we obviously have generator coming or power coming out and we can decrease it and it will then drop down. These are on threshold gates, uh, depending on this is for the RPS for the gearboxes. And this is also on for the watts of there. So if the watts drop below one, so you can see here if our watts go below one, our light goes off if it goes higher than one then the wattage will go higher okay uh, pretty straightforward and how that works uh, and yeah that's pretty much about it what we're going to do now is I'll replicate it I'll do it for four engines and get all that wired up for four engines and then we should be done and should be ready to start working on our actual Lewis scripts for our monitors so I'll go ahead I'm gonna do that I'll meet you back when it's done 
So we've gone and finished all the panels here. It took a little bit of while and a lot of logic to uh, get this all to get connected and all be working. Uh, and it's pretty much all set up now. As you can see, we have four of each uh, type of panel here. Obviously these will all be joined up and will go into the ship uh, at a later stage. But you can see here, we can increase the throttle of each one of the engines independently all over here we've also got it linked up to a main control uh, that can get externally controlled so we don't actually have to use any of these panels or come down to the engine room uh, we can go and start all these engines up and we can check you see each one of the rps's are working all the temps are working individually our pumps are working as you will see the lights will come on at different stages uh, so all the pumps are working uh, we obviously haven't got those connected up just yet uh, we also have the flow rates all working as expected. We also then have the clutches. Uh, you can go and increase the clutches of each one of these. Now, I haven't set up the actual gearboxes to turn on and off yet, so they won't be turning on, but we have our clutches working. Uh, you can obviously see all the propellers are moving. And then finally, we have the generator station. Uh, as you can see, as we increase the wattage of, sorry, the clutch of each one, uh, you'll see that the wattage will start to increase and also the generators will be active and they're all working and then finally if we actually go and decrease the throttle you'll see we'll start to lose power on all the different stations and I actually do want to link this up to a like a warning system so if any of these things fail uh, we will get a little bit of a warning system going on and some sirens and so on and so forth uh, but that will come in the next video the next thing we need to do is actually do the Lewis scripts uh, for these monitors now as I said, we'll have uh, a Lewis script for each one of the engines, so they'll have their own monitor next to them. It'll just be a simple gauge of saying what the stats are of the RPS, the coolants, and so on and so forth. And then those will all be linked up back into our main microprocessor, uh, where you'll be able to switch screens between the different types. Uh, so that's going to be the nice thing that you can go and obviously see all the stats for all the different types of screens uh, from the main station. So yeah, that's pretty much about it. Uh, I think we're going to go and finish this video off there. It's taken a lot of work to get all that done um, but I'm looking forward to the next video and I can't wait to get started back on uh, this project again. So I think we'll go ahead and end today's video over there. Thank you very much for watching, I hope you enjoyed it and found it somewhat entertaining and informative as always and we'll see you in the next one.